Hiya. I thought this morning um, I would do a quick video on a reintroduction to Eden Cottage Yarns. We've had a lot of new subscribers and followers and things like that recently, um, particularly in the past week. And so I thought maybe now would be a good time if you don't know much about us um, for me to tell you a little bit more. Um, so this is a bonus shed cast um, and I'll try and keep it short, but just to tell you a little bit about Eden Cottage Yarns. So, oh, with a dog. <laughs> dog noises. Apologies for that. Um, so there is another dog as well. There we go. There she is, Luna. You darling. You all right, Ebs? What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? So that's us <laughs> at ECY Shed Quarters. I'm Victoria. Um, I'm sure you know that. And I started Eden Cottage Yarns in 2011. There's quite a long backstory um, that I could go into, but um, I'll try and keep it really brief. Basically, I went to uni to do architecture for four years, hated it. Um, it's a seven year course, so it's quite a long time. Uh, stuck it out for four years, eventually dropped out. Um, sort of didn't really know what I was doing, floated around doing various random jobs for a few years following that. Moved to Manchester, um, didn't have a great time, eventually got a job at Pearl City Yarns um, and long time fans may well know me from there. It feels like a lifetime ago now, doesn't it? Um, so that was Eden Cottage Yarns, uh, sorry, Pearl City Yarns, what am I talking about? and um, got a job there, so that was in Manchester. And then things all came to a head. I started making friends and I got a lot more confident and um, got to the point where things just really had to change. So I found myself suddenly faced with potentially being homeless. Well, I would have been, because um, I really don't know what I'd have done. Um, and, uh, losing my job as well so that was a bit tricky um, and I'd always wanted to be self-employed um, my original plan um, back in my teens was that if I'd qualified as an architect then I you know I would have been eventually self-employed um, and that was always the dream it was to work for myself um, I guess in some creative job so um, where are we? Manchester, everything gone horribly wrong. And um, it was a really, really bad time, it has to be said. And the, the only option which came up, which um, this is going to sound really weird, right? And again, it's another long story, which I, I won't bore you with, but my my stepdad basically still had his first house he still owned it up in cumbria and he hadn't been back for a couple of decades right and so he was like well you you could live there so that's how i found myself in the eden valley in cumbria completely on my own um i was completely destitute and i had a lot of debt which had been shall we say forced on me over a matter of quite a long time um and i well i wasn't really earning i think i qualified for at the time would have been working tax credits um and that was my only income but with all this debt to pay off um it just meant that I was destitute, I, you know, I was I, I was on sort of like five to ten pounds a week for food, clothes, fuel. Um, I had no central heating, so it was a case of buying logs and coal for the fire um, and they had to fit into that budget as well. If I wanted to go anywhere, because it was so rural um, and there was no bus, so if I wanted to go and get groceries, I had to use my car, um, which was um a very very old 
Fiesta from 1995. I love that car, but it did guzzle quite a lot of petrol, it has to be said. So that first winter up in the Eden Valley I was very lonely and it was very cold and it was very hungry. And um, I have to be honest, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. There were slugs coming in under the doors, frogs, in fact, as well. Um, but what it did do was give me the opportunity to start my business, which sounds a bit mad, but I had I had no other responsibilities. I literally just had myself and these debts to try and pay off. Um, so, just wondering what I can hear. I think that's dog noises. Um, so, I what I did was using the local library, I used the internet there because I didn't have the internet to start with. I didn't have a TV. Literally all I had was one old radio, which would, would only pick up one station because it was rural. Um, and so that was a bit crap as well. So I used the local library, which again I had to drive to, um, to build, I think I was on Etsy for a very short time. Um, and then I quickly moved over to my own website to save on the fees. Um, and so I started dyeing and selling yarn. And that's, that is how Eden Cottage Yarns was born. Um, Eden Cottage Yarns, the name was my stepdad Ken's idea as well. Um, we brainstormed it for quite a long time and he just hit on it and it was like, well, yeah, of course, <laughs> it completely makes sense. Um, because I was in the Eden Valley, I was li living in a 1730s cottage and selling yarn. So that's that's where the name comes from. It comes from the, the actual Eden Valley. Um, and so, yeah, so the first winter was awful um then things things started to pick up obviously as it, it got a bit warmer um i met dave online in 2012 and we got together um oh, sorry my arms aching from holding the camera up um we got together in 2012 excuse me <sighs> need tea um and yeah, sort of carried on. Um, I carried on running the business on my own and it, it was snowballing and it that was great. Um, I just just worked. That's all I did. I just worked um, constantly and it just lived and breathed it, you know, as you do. Um, and then eventually moved to Yeadon to be with Dave. And of course, then he was able to help out a bit with the business too. Um, so that was great, but thing, things just got busier and busier and I got to the point where I was working, like I'd, I'd be sleeping for like five hours and then the whole of the rest of the time was just work, um, seven days a week and we were doing shows at the weekends and all sorts. Um, so it was going really well, but it was, it was quite difficult to be honest, um, you know, fitting everything in and, and just trying to breathe a little bit. But anyway, you know, we did it as you do. Um, so that was in Yeadon. Then in 2016, we moved to Weatherby. Um, and so that's where we are now. And uh, I'll just show you where I am. You've probably seen all the mess in the kitchen behind me. So you might as well see the rest of it, to be honest. Um, I have no shame. It's a mess, I'm busy. I, I don't have time to, to keep the house immaculate, so tough. Um, that's just the way we are. So we're here in Weatherby, and that was in 2016, but still things were super, super busy, and I was struggling with my workload. And it was a shame really, because we had all these wholesale inquiries and, and I just had to turn them away because I got to the point at, at one time where my waiting list was like 18 months, which is just ridiculous. Um, so when we moved in here, the whole house, it needed rewiring. It was an absolute state, particularly the kitchen, which is obviously where I am now. It was a complete and utter state. But what it did mean was that I could actually do my dyeing in this kitchen. Um, 
which is really not ideal. I do not recommend it at all, but if you've got to do it, then you've got to do it. So I was doing the dyeing in this kitchen and then outside, which I'll show you in a minute, um, we got a couple of sheds, got a large shed for me to dye in and a smaller shed to use as the office. We sorted the garage out. It's an ancient garage. It needed gutting and cleaning out. And that's now the stock room. Um, what I haven't actually mentioned talking about kitchens is that the kitchen in the cottage in Cumbria, honestly, was the size of a sixpence. It was tiny. Like when Dave came to visit on a weekend, you, we couldn't even both fit in the kitchen. It was that tiny because it had been built at some point as a lean to onto the actual cottage um, because the cottage didn't have a kitchen. It just had a big range in the middle of one of the rooms. Um, so I did my dyeing. I mean, I, I honestly don't know how I did it. I kind of spilled out into the garden. Um, I had pots on the range a lot of the time, but of course then you need your coal um, to heat it up. Um, so that was a bit tricky. So yeah, I basically went from kitchen to kitchen because I went from this tiny, tiny kitchen. Then I was in the kitchen in, in Yeadon, which was in a rented house as well. So like the pressure, you, you know, to like look after it and keep it clean and tidy and everything was huge. Um, and then of course came here into a much bigger kitchen, which was brilliant. And that lasted until um, we'd built the sheds. In 2017, um, I think were the sheds ready then? It might have been late 2017 maybe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. In 2017, I bit the bullet and took on Laura, who if you've ever emailed us or um, spoken to us on Facebook or anything like that, you might know her uh, or have seen her name. Um, so Laura does all of our admin, she does uh, there's so much that she does I can't even I can't even describe um but certainly all the emails all of the there's so much stuff behind the scenes that this I just can't I just can't be doing um I just don't have the time I can't possibly do that and die yarn and manage a business so Laura just does all of that um so yeah, basically the day-to-day -day running of the business, all of the stuff behind the scenes, all of the admin, website stuff, that's all Laura. Um, so she she works full time. So I've had her for a few years now. And also um, that after that, I got the confidence to employ two more people. So we have Debbie and Claire. Um, they come and work on the premises, although it has to be said, COVID did complicate that, um, obviously. So they have been working from home, but we've recently um, come back to working on the premises. So Debbie and Claire both work part time. They process and pack the orders and they process all the yarn. So they do all the twisting and labelling, which is, again, these are all big jobs. Um, so yeah between between the two of them they cover me sort of most days of the week for order packing and yarn processing and also just kind of general ideas and motivation and um yeah support as well to be honest they just all support me and hope hopefully i support them as well we we're sort of quite a good little team i think um, I do have an, and now also have another lady who works not here, um, who helps me with the dyeing, Sandra. She is absolutely incredible. Um, she, uh, well, yeah, I mean, what more can I say? She's just, just brilliant. Um, she just completely gets it and, and she's such a perfectionist and, um, yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits that, that I've got her helping me as well because again there's no way that I can produce the amount of um yarn that we need to produce at this point to keep things ticking along um so that we're quite a good team well brilliant team actually you know what we just we are we're a brilliant team and I absolutely love it it's so motivating having people around me who are on the same page um so yeah, so that's the team. That's where we're up to now. 
Um, so at this point, I've been going for 10 years, which is just insane. Um, and it's one of those things I just always, um, I just always said, and I always thought, well, do you know what? If it all goes horribly wrong, I'll go and get another job because I'm generally happy, you know, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I'm quite easily pleased. I've done all sorts of random jobs in the past. So I've always just said, you know, we're, we're not a company that runs with like debts and assets and all the kind of like complicated stuff. You know, we just buy and sell yarn. That's it. I pay, pay my staff, pay my taxes, pay my bills, all in cash. Um, you know, I, I try to keep it very simple. And like I say, if it all went horribly wrong tomorrow, I'd be able to pay all of us and that would be it. Obviously, we hope it'll never happen, but it's a good position to be in because it means you've not got the constant stress of, um, I don't know, just worrying about it, really. I mean, you have, but also you haven't. If I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but you sort of, you know, if you're running your, your business, just like there's cash in the bank, you pay your bills, you sell more stuff. That's it. That's a really, really good way to be running a business, I think. Um, and it means that you can take pleasure in it, in the actual job, rather than just constantly kind of like, I don't know, credit and debt and blah, 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 blah. So, um, so that's where we're at. That's where we're still at today. And that's how I will always keep it. Um, and hopefully we'll have many more years of the same. Um, so... I've told you all about us and the history. Um, I mean, there's loads more that I could tell you, but I won't bore you with it right now. Let me just grab another another uh, drink of my tea and then I shall take you outside and show you around. Mm. Tea is life. Okay, I must warn you, it's really windy out there today. Um, so it might be noisy. So I will talk um, and... Laura will add captions to this later on in case you can't hear me as well, which we do anyway on all our shed casts. Um, so let's go and have a look. So the garden, I mean, I've completely trans... Oh, I've got dogs coming with me. I've completely transformed this garden as well over the years because when we moved in, it was just all gravel, um, which was not very nice, has to be said. So I'll just show you the garden behind me. I hope you can see that. The screen looks really dark to me, but hopefully it won't do to you. There's a dog. So, yeah, I mean, it's not particularly pretty, but we, we still love it, and I've worked really hard on it. I've got lots of um, plants and flowers that are good for wildlife. Um, let's just show you here. You might recognise that scene and that box I do a lot of uh, yarn photography in this area because I like this as a background and I also like that as a background because that's nice and neutral whereas that's kind of a bit more zingy so it depends what I'm photographing and what I'm after at the time um, so I'm not taking you in the dye shed because it's my secret laboratory and if I did I'd have to kill you I'm only joking. I'm not joking. That's the dye shed. So that is like just a 12 foot shed. And that's where I spend most of my time. Um, in fact, you can see a pan on a hob behind me. And then up on the wall, that's all um, swatches of, it's not even all the colors. There's a couple of hundred colors there. Um, but there's even more that are still made. There's constantly colours needing adding to that, that board. Um, so yeah, that's where I work and you can just see the sinks behind me and the water boiler, my big red gloves. Um, so yeah, but that's all you get to see with that. <laughs> um, so that's where I usually am. And then in this shed, this is the smaller one. This is the office. 
where Debbie and Claire usually work if they're not working from home. Um, so I, I will take you in here. Let's just um, open the door. There we go. So here we are. So this is all the just gubbins um, involved in packing orders and processing yarn. There is a box of yarn in progress. In fact, that's actually the yarn that I'm wearing. Um, this is for our next next update. Um, this is a merino linen blend, which is the same as what I'm wearing, and that's fingering weight, um, which is what you you might always know also know as roughly a four ply weight as well. So yeah, it's um it's not a huge space, but we make really good use of it. <laughs> um, check out my teapot. Hang on, hang on, hang on. See my teapot. My brother-in-law got me that. It's an Ember Bridgewater teapot. <laughs> How cool is that? Um, this is where the orders get packed. Um, it's got a lot more complicated this year with Brexit. So there's like even more stuff pinned up on the wall. Lots of information, lots of things to remember. Um, but yeah, we pack a lot into a small space, and it's it's. We try and keep it nice and organised. Um, so that's the office. Um, I'll just close that and keep the heat in. And then I'll take you into the least glamorous bit of the business. But it is quite exciting. The dogs are looking at me like, what are you doing? Can you see them? So this, let me turn around and then you can see behind me is the stock room. Ta-da! Welcome to the ECY Shed Quarters stock room. Um, looking relatively organised. I must admit, I do like to th keep things organised and tidy. But in all honesty, it's just impossible because this just all constantly changes. Um, so on this side, all the way down here is the boxes of hand dyed yarn. Um, I mean, it would be lovely if we were able to just keep the yarn out on shelves looking beautiful, but it just isn't practical. It needs to be in boxes which are... <laughs> They need to, I mean, we've got flippy lids on so that we can just reach in as well, which helps. So you can just kind of go like that. Um, but also being plastic boxes, it means that we can use dry white markers to write what's in them. Um, the, the lids are fairly tightly fitting to obviously help prevent moths and other bugs. I've got moth paper in there as well, though. Um, I have to be honest, in 10 years, it hasn't yet touch wood being a problem so it's obviously it's working um but they also they need to be slightly ventilated so that the yarn doesn't ever get damp as well um this this garage as you can probably tell there's no insulation here and there's gaps like all over the place so it gets extremely cold um in winter it gets extremely hot in summer it rains in it the wind blows in um, so the yarn needs to be protected and looked after. So that's why it's all in these plastic boxes. Um, but this works really well for us. So they're in roughly alphabetical order as well. And then in these white boxes behind me, let's see if I stand here. There we go, just adjust the camera. So these white boxes are the mill dyed yarn boxes. Um, so we have Whitfell Chunky down at the bottom end, then Milburn Four Ply, and then Milburn Double Knit up here. Um, and these are all in alphabetical order as well. And again, we use we can use the dry white markers um, to adjust our stock numbers, and that's what's inside. So, uh, in fact, should I just show you? So this is our mill dyed Milburn four ply, and this is colorway rust. There you go, just turn so that the light's different. Excuse me. 
Um, now, the mill dyed yarns um, were brought in starting in 2014 because, as I've mentioned before, I wasn't able to produce the amount of yarn really that was being demanded. Um, so I first brought in Milburn four ply and it was only in like seven colours um, and that's grown to 20 colours over the years and they're also replicated on the Milburn double knit so we have 20 colours of that. The Whitfeld Chunky is 100% um, baby alpaca, in fact shall I show you? It's 100% baby alpaca, it is discontinued so it's gradually selling out. Um, it's only discontinued because with it being so seasonal, we just don't sell enough for me to be able to then buy more in the minimums required, um, which is, it's a really big shame, but um, that, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to be practical. And if, if you, you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Um, so this is the Chunky Baby Alpaca. So um, if, you, if you do like the look of this, do get it while we've got it, because it is selling out. Um, but yeah, we do have other baby baby alpaca yarns as well though, so all is not lost. But it's so soft and snuggly, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, that's the chunky. Is there anything else in here? That I, well, I mean, other than all the yarn, um, this is a new one that we're about to bring out tomorrow. Oh, let's uh, get that. You, I mean, you can see the state of the garage behind me. It does do the job, it's just not all that nice. Um, this is merino linen as well, but this is Aran weight. And this is going to be debuting in a huge update on the website tomorrow. Um, in fact, I need to bring this bag of, of that into the kitchen with me because I'm going to do a full shed cast episode all about it. I've made a jumper in it and done swatches and all sorts. So that's going to be a whole separate shed cast for that yarn. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, it's yeah brand new yarn i've done absolutely well we've got 32 colorways i think it was to choose from which is a huge amount for debut update especially for us i'd normally start with like 10 um but as soon as i got the yarn i just absolutely loved it and um i just thought Do you know what go big or go home i'm just gonna go for it um so hopefully that will pay off it's quite a big risk especially for me i don't normally do that um so yeah so that's where we're at um i don't think there's anything else really to show you um you've seen all the ecy shed quarters and a bit of the yarn and the animals where is she luna <laughs> uh, snuffling around in the undergrowth over there so um yeah i hope that that's um helped and given you a little bit of insight into who we are what we do um ultimately we just we just love yarn like really really love it and we love knitting and crochet and we love making things we're all very creative um and yeah we're just constantly inspired by things you know so um it's a lot of fun it's very exciting and inspiring and it's allowed me to connect with an awful lot of people over the years so if you're one of those people then thank you thank you so much because in all honesty when I started this in 2011 it, you know I had no idea whether it could work I had absolutely no idea and quite a lot of people told me that it couldn't and wouldn't um which of course did kind of make me want it to a bit more um but nonetheless you just don't know how things are going to work out you've no idea and you know if it wasn't if it wasn't for the customers for the support for the community we simply wouldn't be here that that's all there is to it you know if we're not selling yarn we're not here um so thank you i appreciate it so so much i honestly really do it's just such a pleasure and such a delight to be able to do this and to provide something to people which makes them happy and makes them feel inspired and creative because the thing is our creative time is precious time isn't it 
that that that's that's precious it, it's me time or it might be sitting in front of strictly and enjoying it it might be getting together with friends and and sort of inspiring each other and talking about the lovely yarn and the lovely things that you're making and for my yarn to feature in that it's such a big honor um <laughs> sorry it just really is um and what more can I say other than just a really huge thank you I'm very grateful and no matter what happens no matter what the future brings I shall always be really grateful for this and I know that the rest of the team really really are as well so thank you and welcome to Eden Costa Johns this is us